Next on our list is to take a matrix multiplication approach to convolution. But, uh, you know, maybe some re review of uh, matrix math would be in order. Uh, just kind of a quick review of the notation, for example. Uh, if we have a matrix A, we could indicate that, the, that, the, that this variable A is a matrix by putting a hat on it, or sometimes you'll see it as a bold, uh, bold letter, capital letter. And then we have an array or uh, a matrix of values in rows and um, columns. One, three, two, four. And this is a square matrix. And sometimes you'll see this caret, sometimes it'll be a capital letter. Uh, just to denote that this quantity is a matrix. And then we, we could have another matrix B. Five, seven, six, eight in the rows. And if we take a look at the process of addition and subtraction, <clears throat> they pretty much follow the same rules as regular addition and, and subtraction. So if we take A plus B, we sum the elements in the same row and column with the corresponding uh, elements in the, um, uh, the row and column of A with the same row of row and column in matrix B, so that our result for the summation would be 1 plus 5 for the first term would be 6, 3 plus 7 would be 10, 2 plus 6 would be 8, 8 plus 4, 12, and so on. So these operations are associative and they're commutative. It means that, that if we had three terms, for example, we could have A plus B plus C, if we had B plus C in parentheses, you know, if we did that operation first, uh, the result of A plus B plus C would be the same as if we grouped A and B together and did that summation first, and then, we'll, and then sum that with uh, matrix C. So it's a associative in that sense. It's commutative in the sense that if we add B plus B to A, would be the same as adding A to B. So we get the same answer, associative and commutative. Okay, multiplication. Um, we're mul we've got a matrix times a vector in this case. And the matrix is a um, three column quantity. And you notice that in order to multiply, we have to have the same number of columns in the multiplier in A as we do rows in the multiplicand, or in this case the uh, term on the right, three, three. Three columns, three rows. So if we have this multiplication here, A times B, we've got a um, number of three columns here. We've got three rows over here in B, and we end up with a two term vector A and B. So let's let's go ahead and see how it works. So if A is 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6, and we have a column vector here, 7, 8, 9, we're basically taking 1 times 7 plus 3 times 8 plus 5 times 9. That gives us 7, 24, 45. We add all those together, we get 76. That would be the first term in the output here. And the second term in the output would be the products, the sum of the products of the terms in the second row of A times the values in the column. So we have 2 times 7, 14, 4 times 8, 32, 6 times 9, 54. We add all those together, we get 100. So the product of these two matrices 76 gives us a matrix with the value 76 and uh, 100. So, so this is basically all the matrix math that you need in order to do the wavelet uh, reflectivity problem. But uh, let's go a little bit further. Uh, when we talk about matrix by matrix multiplication, uh, there <clears throat> we, we, we're under the same requirements that the multiplier, if it has three columns in this case, then the multiplicand or the term on the right has to have three rows. So 
So we can't do A times B in this case. We can't multiply the matrix A times the matrix B because matrix B only has two rows. So we're, we can't do it. Not going to work. Um, but if we had the same number of rows in B equal to the same number of columns in A, like we do here, these two square matrices, then we're okay. We can multiply A11 times B11 plus A12 times B21 plus A13 times B31, so on. Add those together. We get a term in the output. How many terms in the output do you think we're going to have? Let's uh, take a look at this um, product here. If we have A times B, and our matrix B has three rows, B11, B12, B21, B22. Uh, the number of rows in B equals the number of columns in A. So we can do this. We can, do, we can go through this multiplication. And we'd also note that the indicial, um, the subscripting here refers to row and column. So we have row 1, 2, 3, all in column 1. We have row 1, 2, 3, column 1, 2, column 1, 2, 3. So the process of multiplication is much like that of addition or subtraction, except that we sum the products to get terms in the product matrix. So and that, would, <clears throat> that would work as follows. So um, we take the quantities in the row, first row of the multiplier, multiply those times the first column of the multiplicand, add them all together, so we get 1 plus 1 times 1, 3 times 3, 2 times 5. That gives us the fir first term in the output matrix, which is 20. And we take this same row, multiply it times the second column in the multiplicand. We get 1 times 2 plus 3 times 4 plus 2 times 6. That gives us 26. And you can see that we have the number of terms that we have in the output matrix is this, this is basically a three row by two column matrix. And kind of coming back to this question, how many terms would we have in the output? Well, we get this row times this column, this row times this column, this row times this column, and then we do that for each column. So we get a 3 by 3 output. We get a square matrix on the output. Here we get the number of rows and the number of columns in the multiplicand, or the term on the, the matrix on the right. 20, 26, 20, 26, 14, and 20. So matrix multiplication is generally not commutative. You can't reverse the uh, order. But it, it is associative and it is distributive. So. Uh, uh, we can multiply A times B plus C, and um, uh, so it is distributive in that sense. Um, it is associative in that we can multiply A times B first, and then multiply it times a matrix C, or we can multiply B times C and then multiply A times the product B times C. So. Okay, so let's look at convolution as a product of matrices. This is the formula that we worked with the last time. We've got uh, the signal, and we're looking at the reflectivity series in increasing order. I goes from 0 to n minus 1 in this summation here. But the wavelet, uh, we're, for any particular output time k, we're running through this multiplication with the wavelet. The terms in the wavelet are taken in reverse order. So that's what this minus sign in here does. So, um, so we're taking the wavelet, reversing the order of the samples in the wavelet, so we have W0 times R0. It would be our first output. And then we slide the wavelet down. We get W0 times R1, W1 times R0. Keep sliding the wavelet down. W0 times R2, W1 times R1, W2 times R0. So on and so forth. So, so, so here... Looking over at the right, uh, as we come on down, we have uh, R3 times W2. The reflectivity is in increasing order. The terms in the wavelet are in, re in reverse order. 
R3 times W2, R4 times W1, R5 times W0. And we kind of went through this a couple ways in the preceding videos, so this should look pretty straightforward. So the outputs are just the sum of the products. So for the output for K equals 0 is a R0 times W0, as we said. For K equal 1, we sum the products R0 times W1 plus R1 times W0. Normal order for the reflectivity, reverse order for the terms in the wavelet. For K equal 2, R0, R1, R2 times W2, 1, 0. Sum all those together. And then for an arbitrary I, J and K, or I, I plus 1, I plus 2, we would have our I times W2, our I plus 1 times W1, and our I plus W2, or our I plus 2 times W0. As we slide all the way down through this reflection coefficient series to get our uh, outputs one by one for the signal. The signal over here in this column vector. Uh, so if we look at it in a matrix multiplication form, we've got the multiplier here, which would be our wavelet matrix. We've got our multiplicand here, which would just be the reflectivity series, arranged as a, as a column vector. The wavelet is in normal order, going down the columns, W0, 1, 2, W0, 1, 2, and then we shift the wavelet down one sample at a time. So column 1, we start off with W0, 1, 2, column 2, 0, W0, W1, W2, and so on. We just kind of slide the matrix down until we run out of, run out of wavelet, basically. In the rows, the rows come in in reverse order. W0, W1, W0, W2, W1, W0, and so on. And they skip across the rows one sample at a time until we run out of, uh, until we run out of samples. Now, if we look at the output number 4 here, we've got um, 0 times 0, plus 0 times 0, plus W2 times R2, plus W1 times R3, plus W0 times R4, and so on. So that would be our um, output. Now, as a problem for you to try, uh, we've got a wavelet. It's defined by the values, the amplitudes, 1, minus 1, half, and 0. And then we've got a simple reflectivity series, series 1, 0, minus 1, half, and 0. So sample 1, 1, sample 0 has a value of 1, sample 1 has a value of minus 1 half, and then the rest are zeros. The reflectivity, we're just showing it pictorially here for the wavelet, and uh, pictorially for the re reflectivity series, 1, 0, minus 1 half. So we're going through, we have a four row, four column matrix times a vector, a four row vector, the reflectivity series. We take row times column, row times column. We sum all the terms together. So it, it should be kind of easily for you to visualize. We take the wavelet, remember we talked about this before, take the wavelet, scale it by the reflection coefficient, and then hang it from individual reflection coefficients. So we'd get this wavelet times 1, and then down here it would be times 1 half. So I bet you can guess what the result is. But give it a try. Go ahead and spend a minute and work through it. And I'll just give you a minute. And time flies when you're on a video. So here we have sample number 0, 1, 2, 3. We have the wavelet. We have the reflectivity. We have it in matrix form over here just using what we learned about matrix multiplication. Uh, row 1 times the column, we get 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 plus 0 times. So we have a bunch of zeros in here. So we just get 1 on the output. Then in row 2, we get minus 1 half times 1. 1 times 0. 0 times minus 1 half. 0 times 0. So our output term is minus one half, be the second term over here. Row three, zero times one. 
one half times zero. One times minus one half, one half, minus one half. So we get another minus one half. And then with the last row and the multiplier, the wavelet, get zero times one plus zero times zero plus minus one half times minus one half gives us a quarter, plus one quarter. So you can see that the uh, wavelet, S of t, the uh, signal that we get when we convolve this wavelet with this reflectivity series is just 1 minus 1 half minus 1 half minus 1 half. And this is just an application. This is just a using a matrix multiplication as a convolution process. So the next time uh, we're going to take a look at uh, an introductory look at um, um, AVO inversion. And uh, see you then. Thanks for joining us.